Welcome into another edition of The Current Report, our weekly roundup of what's happening in the world of digital media. I'm your host, Chris Brooklier. We're just days away from the opening ceremony of the Olympics in Paris, and as we wait with anticipation, advertisers have been getting ready for months, ready to pour in billions of dollars to a global audience. There's so many things different about this Olympics. As we rebound from the 2021 Tokyo Olympics held in the middle of the pandemic, to Peacock holding a much bigger role, and Programmatic carrying the torch for the first time. So to dive into it all, I'm bringing on Travis Clark, who recently wrote a story for The Current on advertisers getting into the Olympics for the first time. All right, pleased to be joined by Travis for the second week in a row. Hey, man. We've got the Olympics coming up. Are you excited for the opening ceremonies? Oh, yeah, yeah. It should be a good time. I feel like it's going to be, you know, a, a rare... You know, everyone get in front of the TV at the same time or in front of your phone, in front of your laptop, however you watch TV these days. Omnichannel. Yes. <laughs> Even if it's on Peacock, it's still the TV, right? You wrote a story for The Current recently about about the Olympics and a lot of the focus was you know, first time advertisers getting in. So from the people that you spoke with, what did you learn from them? With this Olympics, it's on Peacock and that opens up a lot of you know, new ways to advertise. You know, this is the first time that the Olympics will be offered programmatically. That opens up a lot of possibilities for first time advertisers who may not have had access to the Olympics in the past. You know, the the people I spoke to, you know, one person said that this levels the playing field. You know, it, it allows them to, you know, compete in the same arena as much bigger brands. We had on Allison Levin, NBC Universal's president of advertising and partnerships on the current podcast a couple months ago. This was obviously as they were big into preparations into the Olympics and programmatic. And this is what she said about how programmatic, you know, opens everything up for for advertisers from their side. From our perspective, we believe deeply in the power of programmatic and strategic audience buying. Brands, programmatic access really democratizes access to these incredible events where Olympics is one of them. Like just even taking a step back, our entire live sports inventory from the NFL to Big Ten and more now programmatically transacted. And with that, the number of advertisers in 2023 actually grew 87% year over year and the sports revenue doubled, right? So there's just incredible momentum on the number of advertisers that have access to these huge moments. Like they're huge from a reach perspective, they're huge from an attention perspective, and now we're adding Olympics to that. And so when you think about what is the television of today, like what is the opportunity for today? It's precise audiences bought in real time and measurable and the ability to optimize. Like now you can do that with Olympics and with all of live sports across Peacock. Like it is amazing how much this really changed in the last few years. You know, she makes a good point. Obviously, we've seen live sports come more to streaming, which obviously means more ad opportunities coming into streaming for live sports, which is, you know, so such high quality. For the Olympics alone, you know, there's with it coming to Peacock, that's a huge deal, right? There's over 5,000 hours of coverage. So what do you make of, I guess, just the relationship between the pure tonnage of hours that need to be filled with advertising and streaming in the Olympics? Yeah, I mean, NBCU, which owns Peacock and, you know, has the Olympics through 2032 in the U.S., they said back in April that they already had over a billion dollars in, you know, ad spend committed to the Olympics, $350 million of that. Uh, was coming from new advertisers. So, and then you get to, you know, the games in real time, that could increase because, you know, new advertisers and, you know, past advertisers alike are going to have access in a way they've never had access to the Olympics before through Peacock, programmatic on Peacock. So, you know, I think we'll see these new advertisers really get a sense of what Peacock is like if they haven't advertised through it before. This is a great chance get a lot of engagement and, you know, factor that into future campaigns. Yeah, that's it. I think that's an interesting point. It was something that came up in my brain when I was reading your story of, I think we place a lot of focus on what's in it for the advertiser, Mm -hmm. right? But I think it's also, this is a huge chance for NBC and Peacock to, you know, show their feathers, so to say. (laughs) Nice one, yeah. (laughs) Uh, And... 
and really show that they can do this on a massive scale. They did that with the NFL game on Peacock, and this is just another chance to say, hey, you know, work with us. Yeah, they've been riding that NFL high. They reportedly got a lot of um, signups through that exclusive NFL playoff game. And, you know, they can ride that momentum through the Olympics and into the next NFL season coming up a couple months after the Olympics. And, you know, I believe Peacock will have an exclusive Brazil game NFL kickoff weekend. So, you know, they can they can ride that momentum all through these these sports events. It does seem to be like sort of a paradox with the Olympics because it has this massive scale, but also some advertisers want to target really specifically. So what's that mix like for advertisers with, you know, I guess having the optionality of both? The agency with the San Diego Zoo told me that, you know, they considered three factors when deciding to advertise with the Olympics for the first time. Cost efficiencies, audience targeting, and ease of activation. Uh, and they said, you know, the programmatic on Peacock during these Olympics allowed all three of those. So they ultimately decided to to go through with it. And I think a lot of other first time advertisers are probably thinking the same. I'm excited to watch the Olympics. Same. I get to see all the favorites, right? Same Track, man. basketball. What's your favorite? Everything. <sighs> Gymnastics. Yeah. Swimming. S- uh, Simone Biles making her big return. After um, after bowing out in 2021, I think that's driving a lot of a lot of interest in the U.S. at least. So, yeah, I'm excited. Yeah, you always need the stars for the Olympics. Oh yeah. All right, Travis, take it easy. Yeah, you too, man. Next, we're capping off this episode with one last thing. Spotify is such a big force in the audio game, but they're still growing their advertising strategy. And key to that strategy is knowing how the people listening are feeling based on what they're listening to. As the company's head of advertising, business development, and partnerships, Emma Vaughn, recently told The Current. We know the mood that the person is in. We know, in general, that with Spotify, one of the things that we are constantly testing and learning about is that, like, Consumers are 15% happier and calmer when they're listening to Spotify. It is, it is a happy consumption experience. So how do we then take the creative and amplify that? So it like continues to make people feel good. That was just a snippet from our video series, Five Minutes With. To watch the whole interview with Emma, head of thecurrent.com. And that's it for this edition of The Current Report. For a deeper dive on all these stories, plus more, check out thecurrent.com. And of course, please like and subscribe on YouTube, plus leave us a review on Spotify, Apple, or wherever you listen. And if you want to hear more from The Current, listen to The Current Podcast, where we interview some of marketing's biggest leaders about their keystone career moments and where the industry is going next. We'll see you next week. Music.